could do. We're here at Sebring. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking to Tom Carr who has been making an airplane called the Excalibur for, well, how long have you been doing it? 20 years. 20 years you've been doing this now. What is the, give us the sort of the summary view of what Excalibur is all about, Tom. The basic idea was to uh, start with a proven concept and as you know there are only so many ways to build an airplane. It's going to be aluminum and fabric or it's going to be carbon fiber or it's going to be all aluminum or it's going to be wood and fabric, this type of thing. So we wanted to stick with the aluminum and fabric concept. And we wanted to uh, change everything that we thought was important and add features until we just ran out of ideas, you know. Okay. So we feature all push-pull tubes for the controls, no cables on the airplane. We have the shock-absorbing landing gear, which is a special bungee material that's made to our specifications. We this have, is inside the fuselage here. I'm yeah. looking over your shoulder at the landing gear. Exactly. That's all. What you just described is all inside. It's all inside. Okay. It's right behind the back seat. And we have a spring-loaded nose gear now, which is a new feature. And we mount the engine upright, which is the most common way, I think, for pushers. Uh, it's how most people think is logical. So yeah, and this gives having us it upside down strikes people as odd. <laughs> well, this gives us the opportunity to use the uh, gearbox instead of. Uh, a belt drive. Ah, okay, so your gearbox on the Right. And then also we get to use a 68 inch prop instead of a smaller size prop because since the engine lifted the engine up a little This gives us the maximum amount of prop size, you know. And then, uh, you know, we have a new feature too where we have actually moved the main gear back 11 inches for those people who want the airplane to sit on his nose. Because maybe ah, so it doesn't tilt back on the so tail. So it doesn't sit on the tail when you're out of yeah, it. Yeah, there's no one in this one right now, and, and it's sitting and on it's propped up, and yet yeah. it's sitting on its own. Right. So this is helpful to people that are older and have trouble getting into a plane that's sitting on the tail, or maybe they have arthritis or something, or, for some, or maybe they just like the looks of it, which is my excuse, because it always bothered me to see this type of plane sitting on its tail. Okay, people I thought could, there was something wrong with it. I could never get used to it because it's a tricycle gear. It doesn't look right sitting on his tail, you know. So for cosmetic reasons, that was one of the primary uh, motivations for me to do this modification. Now, when we do this, we always put the landing gear weldments in the two positions. One, the original position. So if he doesn't like it sitting on his nose after a while, he can go back to the uh, original position where it'll sit back on the tail. Okay, hey, big guys can fit in this airplane pretty nicely. Well, know. that's another one of our features, Dan. Okay. Um, we have the 30 inch wide cabin, front seat and back seat. It doesn't get smaller in the back seat. Okay. So both people are equally comfortable. Oh, yeah, I see you got it flared out all the way to right about the seat exactly. back. Exactly, yeah. Now, doors are also available. Are they? Okay. They're an option. And of course, down here in Florida. Okay, we yeah, we're here. We like the open <laughs> air blowing through the cockpit. But some people want something around them. Right. Even if it's a little tiny piece of plastic. Exactly, yeah. So the airplane is offered as a kit, is it not? That's the market you're in, as experimental aircraft, uh, experimental, experimental amateur built aircraft? Yes, the market that we're featured in uh, primarily is the kit build uh, market. And our, our price for a complete kit, now this is everything you need for a complete flying airplane at this time is 23,650 wow. in 2014, you know. So those numbers do change, viewers. <laughs> uh, please check with the factory at some point to see what the current numbers are. But a little over 20 grand here right. in the modern world, that is a remarkable bargain. And that price I gave you for a complete kit, that includes the engine, electric start, gel cell battery, carburetors, fuel filters, oil filters, all of this sort of thing, tires, hydraulic brakes, everything but the instruments and the paint. Okay. Now the reason we keep the instruments separate is because everyone has their own choice. Sure. They, Wide they want this instrument instead of this one and we have to keep changing around. So we just keep it separate because some people would just rather buy their own. And they or don't they buy just our... want really simple stuff yeah. and you don't want to run their price up on Right. Them, so we keep that uh, option separate, you know. And then of course the paint, they can use any kind of paint they want. Uh, paint ranges a great deal from a, a few hundred dollars to a few thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. Paint can be a, a pricey and can add quite a bit of weight. Yes, so it you can. need to think yeah. about what you're doing with that, but I understand why you wouldn't provide that. Right. It's too hard to satisfy every need. Oh, yeah. But you do offer some variability on engines. Yes, our standard engine is the Hearth 3202, uh, which is the uh, 55 horse. Now it's air-cooled, two-stroke. 
very reliable engine. They're made in Germany and have been made there for 80 years or something. Long history. Or at yeah. least the company's been in business that long. I don't think they've been making that model of engine that long, but it's a great uh, company. And uh, you can add features to that engine like fuel injection. And uh, so it's a versatile engine where you can add extra things if you want to. Do you offer any other engines? Yes, that we right? do. Now the upgrade to that would be the Hurt 3203, which is a 65 horse engine. Now that has a 1,000 hour TBO, whereas the 55 horse that we just talked about has a 1,200 hour TBO. Okay. So that's very impressive. Yeah, this is in a two-stroke motor now. Yeah, it, it and is. That's a long overhaul time. It is indeed. Uh, some other engines are limited to 300 or maybe even 500 hours for a TBO. So those numbers are very impressive when you get up to 1,000 hours, you know. Now also, some of our customers, Dan, are opting for a four-stroke engine. We can give them the HKS 700, okay. made in Japan, four-stroke, uh, 60 horsepower, air-cooled, or we can go with the Jabiru. Now, surprisingly, a oh, lot you're of doing the Jabiru as well. The 80 uh, horsepower. You're doing the 2200 then, the yes. 80 horsepower uh -huh. version. It's a good compromise for for an alternative to the 912 Rotax. And I kind of like it because it's air cooled, so that's one less thing that can go wrong. Plus, it's the same horsepower though as the 912. But those are our two four stroke options. Now, you got some other wild idea you're hatching, I understood? Well, we've been working on a twin engine idea for some time. And that's our main goal to have the Excalibur Twin, which we're shooting for about $48,000 on that. Wow. And that would feature two 65 horse Earth engines on there. Uh, and then with the option to go to the two 80 horsepower Jabrus. So we have to make the plane uh, compatible and uh, capable of handling the two 80 horsepower engines. That's a pretty big project you're talking well, about. Well, it is, it is, but I know there are going to be customers who want the 80 horsepower Jabiru's, so we might as well go ahead and make it comparable for that to start with. Right talk to me briefly about the build time on a kit. Well, rather than talking about uh, months or years, because there's no telling how often somebody will actually work on their project, we talk about hours. Now, this airplane and most of our airplanes can be built in 150 hours. 150. Now, this, yeah, now, this airplane right here was built by an 85-year-old retired Air Force pilot, a colonel in the Air Force. And he had always built model airplanes all of his life. He finally wanted to build a real airplane. So he chose the Excalibur. He built this airplane in 150 hours. It flies beautifully, and of course he flies it every day because we have nice weather generally here in Florida. So that gives you an, an example of how quickly the plane can be built. But of course he's retired, he works on it every day. And so it was only a few months, like a three or four months, and he was done. That's a pretty low number in the in the kit world. That's a low. That's not oh, a lot. Yeah. Of, there's not a lot of time and so forth. Well, so this is a good entry level airplane. Yeah. You don't need any elaborate tools. Basic tools will do it. In fact, most people have the tools they need around their house right now. Is there a goal? Yeah. Well, Tom, I've asked you a lot of questions. People always have more. You can never answer enough questions, I guess. But we've given them a taste of what it's like with uh, the Excalibur airplane. Uh, tell us where we go to find you on the web, and we'll put it up on the screen for our viewers. And uh, where do we get more information? How do we contact you? All right. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for the interview. And I always enjoy reading your articles in the magazines. And I've been to your website, too, danjohnson.com. So that's always an enjoyable thing for anybody interested in aviation. And as far as the Excalibur is concerned, you can go to ExcaliburAircraft.com. Excalibur Aircraft. And we have lots of videos and pictures and information. Beautiful. We'll get you there. Uh, we'll have more information about the Excalibur and, as Tom mentioned, all kinds of other light aircraft and light sport aircraft. You can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks a lot for joining us here at Sebring.